Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and for this week's Sketchbook Sunday, we have a burger! And I'm so pleased to share this because I think it's my favorite Sketchbook Sunday project ever. So I'm starting off with a, um, a circle, pretty much a circle, for the bun, and I'm flattening out the bottom. Um, I'm working really uh, loosely, I'm using very light lines because I want to be able to erase and change my mind um, if my drawing isn't accurate. You will save yourself a world of frustration by taking a little extra time in the beginning to get an accurate um, sketch and that's what I'm doing here. I had a really crisp beautiful reference photo to work from and I found it on the website Unsplash by the photographer Alariza Etmadi. I may not be pronouncing that correctly uh, so I apologize if I'm not but I will link that reference photo below so you can see it. What I really liked about this um, this photo was the different shapes and textures and contrasts. So we have the smooth glossy bun we have the glossy shiny tomatoes. It just looks so juicy. We have the ooey gooey drippy cheese. Uh, we have the kind of pocked texture of the burger and we have the crisp uh, light and um, curly lettuce there. So I just thought there was a lot of soft, hard, crisp and juicy textures. It would be a lot of fun to um, replicate. Now the products I'm going to use today, other than just a regular old mechanical pencil for my sketch and a soft white vinyl eraser uh, to erase, are pretty simple. I'm using all products by Arteza, Arteza, Arteza or Arteza. I usually say Arteza. I'm not sure which is right. But I'm starting off with their um, real brush pens, which are like the Zig Real brush pens, except the tips are a little bit bigger. They're a lot cheaper, uh, so I really like them because I don't have to worry about using them up. And I'm working on a Fabriano Venice book, my typical sketchbook Sunday sketchbook. Now I was going on dry paper with these markers and just kind of trying to block in some color. Now, to be honest, I'm much more comfortable starting off with uh, watercolors, but I wanted to do markers because I see some really cool marker illustrations on um, Instagram, and I thought it'd be really fun to give markers a try. I'm more proficient with alcohol-based markers, but this paper is not suitable for alcohol pens, so I figured I would just give these markers a whirl and see how I got on. My plan here is to get some base tones down with the um, markers and then go over with gouache, but using the gouache a little watered down so I kind of glaze over with a semi-transparent glaze so I can build up my layers that way and end up with a fairly realistic um, image when I'm done. I know it doesn't look too hopeful at this point, but um, trust me, it's sometimes kind of fun to put in these darker uh, colors first, get those shadows down, and then glaze over to get a more, um, I guess, a more heavy, realistic, weighty result. So that's what I'm doing here. Now, if I had a large area, I wet it and spread the marker out a little bit like in the bun, but for smaller areas, I'm just going in with a marker on its own. I love this uh, cheesy orange color, and I just pretty much colored all of the cheese in with that, knowing that that's going to be a real safe color to have underneath. I also made sure I had a couple of grays. I had kind of a, um, a cool, I would say probably 70% gray, although they're not, the colors aren't labeled, but that's what I would reckon it to, and probably like a 40% cool gray because I thought those will be nice shadows for me to glaze in later and um, even if I'm going over gouache or going over something else I can um, I can kind of tone things down and deepen colors that way and I'm spreading some of that red around to get the surface of the tomato because the tomato skin is darker and I want the surface a little bit lighter and here you can see me going in with that lighter of the gray pen and just kind of adding some shadow and even though it's still very uh, color booky looking I'm starting to get some depth and some roundness and some weight to my bird Burger. I wanted to keep this illustration on a white background, but I did want a little bit of weight underneath the picture, so I wet the bottom of my paper and then I went in with some of that light gray marker just at the edge of the burger and kind of spread it down with a brush. Now I'm traveling around the illustration and adding in some shadows that I see. So these are going to be extreme and they're going to look a lot darker than my final project is going to come out, but I wanted to get those, um, those shadows in now so that as I glaze over with my um, semi-opaque medium of gouache, I will still have those shadows and it will probably save me a little time in the long run. This picture took me about an hour and 15 minutes total to sketch. So um, it, you know, I did put a considerable amount of time into it, but um, a lot of, a lot of illustrators would, would do much longer than this. Uh, but I thought that was adequate to get my point across. Now I am using my gouache and I've got some yellow ochre here. 
and I am glazing over the burger bun. So you can see I've added enough water to that gouache that I do not have a completely opaque look. I'm adding in some burnt sienna as well to give it that warmth um, shadow, and I'm trying to apply my paint in kind of a choppy formation um, that's kind of, well, it's like smooth and choppy at the same time. I want the bun to be smooth, um, and I want it to have uh, a little bit of texture to it, but it's definitely had like a, an egg wash on it or something because it is a little glossy, and I want to make sure that I keep that um, that texture, that kind of uh, smooth, glossy uh, texture to the bun. And I'm tapping in some of the uh, the white gouache too to get that effect. And I'm doing the same thing on the bottom part of the bun. The bottom barn bun is a little bit. Um, it was probably like in a mold, like in a pan, so it's uh, not so glossy. It's got a little bit of a wrinkliness to it. It's a little bit lighter in color, so I'm just trying to achieve that using my gouache and glazing over what I've already done in the markers. I don't like to have redundancy in my work, meaning I don't like to just do one thing over and over and over again. I like to find a way to do it once and then, you know, have it make some impact. I think sometimes we can enjoy a painting so much that we putter around in the same spot over and over again. Now I'm using some gouache. I did um, green, like a kind of like a permanent green light, um, some lemon yellow and some white, and I'm adding in that fresh, crisp green lettuce. And I, you don't need to paint everything. You just kind of add some here or there. You are going to see the marker underneath and the shadow underneath, which I love. And, um, you know, just kind of dab in the other colors that you see and you can enhance it as you go. Uh, I'm using brushes that are mostly from the Zen All Media range, which are a golden tacklon brush. Uh, like what you would use for a light bodied acrylic paint and I am using that to apply the paint because I find with gouache even though I am using it kind of in between a gouache and a watercolor it still needs um, bristles that are a little bit stiff so it pushes the paint and it lifts the paint out of the cake without adding too much additional water to it so that's my recommendation if you are using gouache is to go with a um, an acrylic painting brush rather than a watercolor brush um, that's just my personal preference I think that if you are going to use gouache as it's intended you're going to have better results with a golden tacklon brush like that now for the texture of the burger patty I am dabbing in some white and yellow ochre and burnt sienna and I'm trying to get that kind of um you know, ground beef or veggie burger texture. You know, it's got that just roughness to it. And that's what I'm trying to get there. I'm going back in with that, a darker gray uh, marker this time, and I am just defining those shadows a little bit. The cheese is really thick and, and gooey, and I want that to cast a little bit of a shadow um, on the elements underneath. Also, I want to be able to get that smooth, crisp line of the tomatoes and the edge of the bun where it was cut. Um, so I'm really paying a lot of attention to textures here. Um, something else I want to warn you about is uh, just to be careful with your edges when you're doing something that's really illustrative. Uh, that's where the markers are handy because they do have a nice fine point, um, but you're going to see like uh, situations where areas got bigger because I let the uh, the paint kind of I wasn't paying attention and I um, messed up with the brush stroke. So our uh, our tomato on the left is going to get a little bit bigger here <laughs> to to come to accommodate a kind of smudge that I had, which actually didn't show up on camera. But trust me, there was a smudge there that I had to um, that I had to account for. Now adding a little bit of shadow on the edges of round objects will make them appear a little more round. So that's really handy. And if you need help with that, no where to add shadow, knowing where to add value, check out my class Learn to Draw with Lindsay. Um, this week, now if you're watching this Sketchbook Sunday when it came out, this week I have a birthday special going on because I just turned 42, so you can get any class on my Teachable School for $42 with the coupon code HB42. Um, the coupon's good through July 20th, and I will put that link in the video description, and that is good for any of my classes over at Teachable. And I would recommend the drawing class if you're really looking to get a good foundation in art and you want to know how to draw. If you don't care about learning how to draw and you like want to learn watercolor um, I recommend the essential tools and techniques for watercolor so um, they're all I think they're all good courses all worth the money um, but those would be my my recommendations to start with if you really are looking to get some good foundations in your art uh, the cheese proved to be the most um, 
I would say challenging subject here. Um, I think I got a little too heavy with some of the gray shadows early on and that gray had a really heavy blue base. So what happened was it was turning my cheese kind of green and nobody wants green cheese on their burger. So I had to, uh, I had to keep layering on that. And um, I ran into a situation that I've never encountered with gouache before where I layered so much that I couldn't get it completely dry during the time when I was sketching and when I tried to go over it with pencil, it wouldn't stick. So um, I think it was mostly because I was working in the span of an hour and even though I did use my hair, my uh, heat gun at a certain times to dry, maybe the air was just so damp. It, I had a really hard time getting it dry enough to layer over color pencil. But so that was the only thing that really bothered me in this picture and I, I'm happy with the way it came out, but it did give me some challenge. So now I'm going in with a white pretty much on its own and that's a titanium white, which does have a fairly cool undertone and tapping that into the burger to get a little bit more of that gloss to the bun. Um, I needed to add some more yellow ochre and burnt sienna to that though because that white was so cool in color temperature, it felt, um, it felt like like it didn't match the subject I was painting. Like I felt like that highlight was way too cool. That would be like the highlight you get on ice cream or a cupcake or something, probably more like ice cream or something, something cooler. Or if the local color underneath the color of the bun was less warm, it just didn't seem to match. So I again tapped on some more of the yellow ochre and burnt sienna to warm it up and also make that look a little bit more realistic. Cause what I'm going for is the sheen of an egg wash on bread, which is not a super shiny thing. It's not like, super glossy, but it does have a sheen and a gloss to it, but I still need it to look like bread underneath. So I really had a lot of fun, um, kind of figuring out this texture and playing with the uh, with the materials to get the end results. Um, it's I love to paint food for some reason and I love to paint food that I don't personally eat like this. Um, this is a cheeseburger, right? I don't eat cheeseburgers, but f I love the textures in this picture and it was so much fun to create. Uh, same with like, um, you know, meringues and macaroons and cupcakes and things like that. Things I typically don't eat unless there's a vegan version of it. I find the texture so alluring. Um, because sometimes, you know, they, you can make tasty vegan alternatives, but they're usually not as pretty and um, they definitely don't have that just decadent confectional, confectional, that's not a word. <laughs> they don't have that decadent look that, you know, traditional uh, foods do. And, um, and so, yeah, that's why I like to, like to illustrate these. Just fun, fun. And that's what the sketchbook's about. My sketchbook Sunday is about just having fun and, um, you know, growing my, um, you know, trying to achieve some growth in my personal artworks and sharpening the saw, which, you know, there's an old adage where um, there was these two tree cutters and one is getting so much done. And every time the second tree cutter looks over, he sees a guy sitting down. He's like, well, what's going on? I am working nonstop. I'm working so hard and I've only cut down half as many trees as that guy over there did. So he saw the guy taking another break and he walked over to the first tree cutter and said, how have you cut twice as many trees as I have? You've just been sitting here and resting every time I look over at you. And he goes, I'm not resting. I'm sharpening my saw. So that's, I think of that adage all the time. I think as artists, we need to sharpen the saw, not just do what's comfortable for us, not just do what comes naturally and comes easily, but challenge ourselves to do things that are, that are hard, that are different, that look challenging, that, you know, tackling something you might not really know how to do that sharpens a saw, whether it is a knitting pattern or it is a um, stamping technique or it is um, embroidery. It doesn't matter what craft or art you enjoy, take something on that is difficult and challenging. You know, try a complicated jewelry stitch if you like to make jewelry, beading stitch. Try something um, that is difficult with a new medium you're not that comfortable with yet. I don't think it ever hurts you to try new things and to branch out and experience because with mixed media, you're gonna use a bunch of different products together. If you are painting with watercolor, but you're feeling stale, like you can't make a breakthrough, like you're just not getting better, try oils, try something different. And when you come back, even though it's a completely different techniques, you're gonna come back with new ideas that you can apply to your watercolor. I know it sounds silly, but I think for me anyway, that really keeps it fresh and keeps it fun and makes me want to create more art.
So you can see I did put another layer on the cheese because um, I felt the cheese especially I think really needs to feel thick and opaque because that's the texture of the actual item. So going back in um, every few few layers or every few minutes and adding another layer I think really helps. Now I'm using that dark um, brush marker. Oh, and another thing I want to mention, this, these are like real brush markers, meaning instead of having like a fiber tip, they have a... Um, they have little bristles, brush bristles, and you can wipe them off. So please don't do this with your Copic markers or your Tombow markers, any of the felt tip markers, because you could mess up the tips by picking up other media and then it clogging the tips. And I don't want you to, um, I don't want you to ruin any expensive markers, uh, but it's okay to do this with the real brush markers because you can wipe the, the bristles off. It's not gonna clog the tip and it's not gonna feed anything back into the barrel of your marker. So that's another benefit of having these real brush pens. And these um, Arteza ones are not as expensive as the Zig real brush pens, so you can get like a big pack for the price of just a couple of the Zigs. So I, or if you have Zigs, go ahead and use them. You're not gonna hurt them doing this technique, but I'm just saying if you're looking for that, um, uh, that style of, of marker, the Arteza ones are a bargain. And I like how they have such a fine tip, even though the tip is bigger than Zig's, I can go in and add that really fine like gray shadow here and there. And since I started off using gray shadows at the beginning, it's not gonna look weird for me to add gray shadows at the end. Sometimes that's weird, like if you're doing a painting and you're sticking with traditional colors, and then you go in with a gray marker, it's like, oh, that doesn't look right. It looks like you've cut out the thing. It doesn't look right, um, and that's why. So here I just have my tried and true, uh, Z, um, what is that? That is a, a Uniball Signo white gel pen. So this is not an Arteza product. This is a Mitsubishi pencil product. And I'm just putting in little slices of sharp highlights uh, where I need them. And now I'm using the Arteza colored pencils, which I haven't used for a while. And the reason for that is that they have been in a tin. And upstairs in my office, my Prismacolors are in a rack next to my desk. And downstairs, my Colorsoft and Polychromos are, are in a rack. Uh, but these are actually nice pencils. If you don't want to spend a lot of money and you want a good variety, um, they're really wonderful. You might still want a more opaque white to go with it, though, like a Colorsoft or a Prismacolor white to go with it. Um, it comes with a white, but it's a little bit more translucent than um, than other brands. The colors are super vibrant, though, and they're really nice on white paper, and I really like the way they glaze on top of the gouache to give me that kind of cast reflection that I was looking for. Um, and again, I'll link those up. They remind me quite a bit of the Prismacolors, but they're just not as opaque. So if you like working on white paper, they're an excellent buy, and they're so much cheaper than the other pencils that are out there uh, right now. Um, they're, I would say, hardness-wise, they're probably the softness of like a a polychromos are not quite as soft as a Prismacolor, but because of that, you won't have as much breakage issue as you do with Prismacolor. So, you know, you give a little, you get a little. That's that's a story of, of pretty much everything, especially art. And um, I, they will hold a point really long uh, for a long time, which I really like. They'll hold their points longer because they're not as soft, which is good for like this technique here where I'm going in with a um, dark gray. I'm adding, sh actually, no, this is a dark brown. I'm sorry. It's a cooled brown, so it's not really orangey. And I'm going in and adding the cast shadows here. And I'm adding any crisp details that I need, like right underneath the cheese. I'm going in with that kind of flesh tone and adding it to the burger patty. And I did add some of that into the um, the bun as well. I'm crisp making the bottom of the burger really sharp on the bottom of the bun with that dark brown um and I'm using that anywhere I need shadow and I need crispness. So it's not black. Black would be a little too harsh, I think, but that dark brown really fits the bill and really looks nice. Um, now I'm doing a little scumbling here, and this is when you use very light pressure and you just kind of glide over the paper using a scribbling motion, and it um, gives you a little bit of a texture. Um, I'm taking one more go at the white highlight on the cheese, because I feel like it needs to be a little bit more bold, because it was really reflective in the reference photo. Um, I guess it didn't have to be that reflective, that's completely up to you, but it, I was finding a difficulty with layering the cheese up so that it got as thick and as creamy as I wanted it to look, and now I'm going in with some more of that um, warm yellow. I think it's a cadmium yellow, don't quote me on that. Uh, all the colors are from the, the uh, 24 set of Arteza gouache. It's a great buy. I highly recommend that. I've been using that for, oh, I don't know, maybe six months. And, um, and it's been just wonderful and it's so inexpensive. So um, highly, highly recommend it. And I was lightening up the bottom bun because I thought, well, it's lighter in the reference photo. So I was trying to be accurate to that. And um, then I'm just giving it a final dry here so I can uh, layer in a little bit more. And I thought I got that bun still wasn't warm enough. I thought it was too light. So I was going in with some yellow ochre. Then I blotted some off. So at this point, I really should be done because I was just kind of messing around with it too much. And there you have it. I really enjoyed 
creating this. I enjoyed the way it came out, and I hope you give it a try. Check out the reference photo in the video description by Alariza Etmadi from Unsplash, and uh, you can print it off or open it on your computer and have a look at that as you're creating. Uh, don't forget the sale in my um, Teachable School. I'll put links and the coupon code in the video description so you can get any class for $42, or you can get a discount on the payment plans if that fits your budget better. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.